Tucked away in the Mecca of Brooklyn, there's a safe haven offering 5,000 books written by black women. This safe haven also offers resources, conversations, and community, all made possible by a book fairy named Ola. So the Free Black Women's Library started in 2015 in the summer with 100 books written by black women. And part of the reason why I started this project is I wanted to do something that really centered the brilliance, creativity, diversity, and imagination of Black women writers, Black women artists, Black women thinkers, cultural scholars. And I wanted to do something that also worked as a resource for the community in terms of providing space to talk about things that were important to us and to also talk about these books. Now, as time went on, the collection of the library started to grow and I got to 1,000 books, 2,000 books, 3,000, and then getting to the point where I had over 5,000 books, I thought, wouldn't it be wonderful for us to have an actual brick and mortar space where all the activities that take place within the library can happen. Because initially it was a traveling library where I would travel around with the book collection and I would install the collection in these different free public spaces. And it started to become a lot for me as far as the physical labor of it. And I felt like we just needed an anchor and a central spot to be. And that's how it came to be. Uh, the library works as a resource and it also provides access to books that people not, might not normally find in a bookstore or your local public library. The way the library works is through a trading system where for every book you bring, you get to take a book. So there are people who have been trading books with me since the library began eight years ago, and I've traded thousands of books with thousands of people. And sometimes people might say, oh, it's called the Free Black Women's Library. That means it's for Black women only, when that's actually not the case. All ages, all races, and all genders are welcome to come to the library, to come and check out the collection, to take come a workshop, to come take part in the conversation and to come and trade books with us. This is completely different from my nine to five and I have no library training whatsoever. I have huge respect for librarians. I have huge respect for anyone, uh, especially black, especially women, especially black women specifically who pursue a master's in library sciences. That is a very privileged field. It is a field where you don't see a lot of Black women and Black people. Mm -hmm. Librarians inspire me. The work of Black women librarians like Dorothy Porter uh, inspire me. A book lover, somebody who sometimes considers myself a type of renegade book fairy but I am not a librarian. The hardest part about this project has been the funding, mm -hmm. the amount of money that it costs to do something like this, the fact that I'm basically laboring and have been laboring for almost 10 years now with no pay, um, the amount of money that it costs to keep the lights on, keep the internet on, the insurance, to get new books, uh, all these different things. Um, Outside of that, everything else has been pretty awesome. pretty awesome. The community is very, very supportive, very, very appreciative. I have, I get so much love from the people of bed -Stuy and the people beyond bed -Stuy. And sometimes I might get a man, you know, a black man might say something like, oh, how come you can't have a black man's library? And I'm like, because that's not my focus. Uh, but please feel free to start one and I will support you and even give you tips on how to get that going. So I'm not anti white people. I'm not anti black male writers. One of my favorite writers is James Baldwin. So that wouldn't even make sense. Um, 
But what I'm doing here is I'm tackling a very specific issue that is faced by Black women, Black femmes, and Black gender nonconforming folks, which is that we are often left out of intellectual conversations, um, our intellectual labor, our creative labor that has existed throughout the history of this country and beyond is often ignored, diminished, erased. And so I'm here to just amplify it. I'm here to just celebrate it. So that's what this project is about. So I'm a bed baby. I'm a bed mama. I'm a bed artist. I am in love with my Bedford-Stuyvesant community. Uh, this is where I've raised my own child. This is where I have found, uh, this is where I've found love and lost love. Um, this is where I have grown as a person. Uh, this is where I've made my most significant connections in my life. Uh, I love bed -Stuy. I love what bed -Stuy represents as far as like the diasporic nature of Blackness that exists in bed -Stuy. I love the fact that in bed -Stuy, you will see Black folks that are literally from anywhere in the world, uh, whether it be from Brazil or the Caribbean or London or down South or New York specifically. I love that. I love the nature of the block parties and the community gardens, music that's bumping from people's homes, um, the dreadlocks, the braids, like it's just, had it has its flavor. Like you can go anywhere in the world. And if you mention bed -Stuy, if you mention Brooklyn, people automatically know what you're about. Um, and one of my concerns about bed -Stuy is that it's being violently gentrified. And part of the, what, part of the issue that happens with gentrification is that the people that give it, give it its flavor and its culture um, end up being pushed out and priced out of the neighborhood. So you have this space that is so vibrant and so alive and has a very specific energy. And then you have this outside entity that comes in and just colonizes it and takes over. And all of that flavor ends up disappearing. So one of the main reasons why I wanted to do my project in Bedside, outside of the fact that I love it so much, is because I wanted to establish a space where that culture is not lost. I wanted to establish a space that says we are here, like black folks are here in Best Stuy and we're not going nowhere. And this place belongs to us just as much as it belongs to anybody else. So Bet I just love Best Stuy. Like I often describe this project as a love letter to Best Stuy specifically. I am disgusted. <laughs> I'll just speak bluntly. Um, I am disgusted by book banning. I am disgusted by the censoring of intellectual thought. Um, I am disgusted by the fact that there you have writers like Audre Lorde, Alice Walker, Toni Morrison, Maya Angelou, June Jordan, whose work is now considered like propaganda, uh, whose beautiful essays, beautiful writings, beautiful novels that are so inspirational and so nurturing and so affirming for Black people are now considered to be contraband and things that we're not allowed to have. I'm very, I find it very disturbing. And I also find it to be very telling uh, because the, the conversation around uh, Black people and writing and reading just as, just in terms of the history of that in this country has always been fraught with tension. Uh, there was a time when Black people weren't even allowed to read. And if you were a Black person and you were caught reading publicly, uh, you would suffer serious harm as a result. So there's something specific about reading and the power of books and the way books can transform you that the powers that be um, they're very aware of that. They're very aware of the transformative power and nature of books. And there's a reason why they don't want you to read books by specific people, uh, because they know that once you start reading this, these books, your mind will expand. Uh, you'll start to think about things a little bit more critically. You'll start to think deeper. 
uh, possibly think a little bit more radically. And being a critical thinker is the number one thing that the powers that be do not want. I'm glad that uh, I have these books in place for folks. Uh, one of them is Toni Morrison, of course, um, who's probably one of the greatest writers of all time, not even Black woman writer, but just writer in general. Um, Octavia Butler, who is a science fiction writer who writes uh, science fiction, speculative fiction, uh, elements of horror sometimes in her work. I also uh, love Roxane Gay. I think Roxane Gay is an incredible cultural critic and writer. I also love Nish Sharp, uh, who wrote a book called In the Wake. Uh, well, I'll say James Baldwin, because he's the GOAT. <laughs> he's incredible, iconic. Uh, Intasaki Shange, who wrote for Color Girls. Um, Gloria Naylor, who wrote Mama Day. A uh, writer named Akwaki Amazi, black non-binary writer, who's writ who wrote a book called Freshwater. And June Jordan, of course, really great writer. Uh, Yagyasi, uh, who wrote Homegoing and Transcendent Kingdom. Uh, Caitlin Greenwich. I could go on for a long time. I see. My goal for the Free Black Women's Library is that it I generates like it to become self-sustainable so that I have a small staff that I can pay real wages to and that it's just a space that people continue to use as a literary hub a social site, a Black feminist archive, a place where people can come and learn, take workshops, connect with other people. The Schomburg in Harlem, which is uh, one of my role models as far as that space. I uh, use it as a reading room, a co-working space, the same way you would use any public library. Uh, and I have other dreams, like I would like to develop an app from this project so that people who aren't in Brooklyn who want to connect with the library and be part of the community can plug in through the metaverse. And when I first started the library, it was a traveling library. So I would like to bring back that element in a smaller fashion with a little van. So if anyone out there is watching this and you want to donate like a little school bus to me, please send me a message. <laughs> Uh, it would be really nice to have a little bookmobile, like the free Black Women's Library bookmobile that can be driven around from place to yeah. place. Yeah, yeah. So the free Black Women's Library reading room is located in Bed Stuy at 226 Marcus Garvey Boulevard, and we are now open Wednesdays and Thursdays from one to five, Saturdays and Sundays from one to six, uh, and anyone is welcome to come and use this space to read, write co-work create rest dream and connect with other people as well as connect with the written word you are also welcome to take our free workshops come to our film screenings our performances our conversations and you're welcome to trade books with us bring us good books written by black women or black non-binary folks and you can trade one for one two for two ten for ten you can find me on social media at the Free Black Women's Library on Instagram and on Facebook. You can also find me on Twitter, TFBWL. And you can find me on Tumblr, which I know people don't use that much. The Free Black Women's Library. I'm also on TikTok at Wayward Girl. And lastly, but not leastly, my website, thefreeblackwomenslibrary.com. Perfect. Thank you very much.